Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today our 10 year anniversary celebration continues as we review the first videos we each filmed for the channel. Cheers, Preston. <laughs> Even though we didn't regularly start publishing YouTube videos until 2014, we started the Gentleman's Gazette website in 2010. That's why it's a 10 year anniversary. So we've filmed a number of videos celebrating this anniversary and you can find the first part of our collaborative effort where we answer your frequently asked questions here. All right, let's stay in chronological order and start with my first video, which was titled 50 Things About Me. And no, I'm not a narcissist, but at the time we saw these Vogue video trailers, which were things about me. And we thought it was a good idea to have that as our first video, just to tell people a little bit more about me and what I like and what I don't like. So it's easier to connect. Obviously, as it was our first video, a lot of things were quite amateurish. At the time though, I thought I'd already done so much theoretical research that would have a good first video. Well, look for yourself. My name is Sven Raphael Schneider. I'm the founder of the Gentleman's Gazette in Fort Belvedere. And every week I receive many questions about myself and why I started it and Fort Belvedere, the brand. And so I decided to create a video Wow, right? I mean, low energy. I'm just sitting there and like, oh yeah, I get all the questions about myself and my emails. It just, I'm not like that in real life. Mm -hmm. But when you start out filming, it's just hard, right? Because you just talk like you normally do and, and then you watch it on camera and then it, it feels like all the oxygen was sucked out of it. It just takes a little time to find your voice. This though sounded more like an arrogant prick not like a gentleman, so sorry about that. You said it, not me. Create a video about 50 things about me. Can you hear? We didn't quite have our jingle yet, so we just used some classical music. It doesn't sound bad, but it's sort of different. But look at different. that, out of focus, in focus, nice. Mm, very cinematic. I mean, look at that, 40 seconds into the video and we haven't even started. Like, live and learn, right? Mm -hmm. All of my friends and family call me Raphael. I was born in Germany, and so there's not this concept of first, middle, and last name. And only when I came to the US, people started calling me Sven. So if you know me, you call me Raphael. Yeah, I mean, that's still true. But honestly, you can tell it's very slow. I speak like with a natural pace like you would when you talk to a person. Mm -hmm. and on a video, it's just always so much slower. I'm 30 years old. I'm a happily married. Five years ago. wife, Teresa. I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. And I started in Gentleman's Gazette because I have a true passion for classic men's clothing, style, and uh, savoir vivre. A lot has changed since then. Oh, well, <laughs> most people <laughs> see the high bling, the spontaneous. Right. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, no. Good no. question. <laughs> I'm just stressed. <laughs> Can I agree with that? It doesn't really have a big effect on me. I'm very even keel, not big mood okay. swings and reliable and uh, I'm almost impossible to insult. I'd say that's true too. Um, my wife I would mean, say just look at my hair right it looks so like poofy and stuff <laughs> it's kind of funny I like my hairstyle now a lot better I mm. mean for sure. Yep. I have a good memory and uh, I don't really have favorites. I like many things but it's difficult to, to pick just one thing. Obviously, you know, it wasn't that well thought through. I think at that point, you know, we were more concerned about like the lighting and is the sound gonna work? And we had these, we bought these lights and we were like, oh, let's, let's use them. But then we turned them on and we heard a noise. And we were like, Shit, you can actually hear it on the, like when we record it, we're like, 
is that right? Like we didn't know. So we actually turned off the lights we had bought and just filled it with natural daylight. So that's why you can see some variation later on. Uh -huh. But it's just, we were so concerned about that and we didn't do a whole lot of prep work. I also really don't like paper plates and plastic silverware. That's and right. As paper far plates as are goes, a big pet peeve, I huh? I <laughs> am not a fan of macaroni and cheese. Um, when it comes to movies, I generally don't like Disney movies or science fiction. Yeah, what do we do with all that stuff? It would be fun. I really questions. just like mm -hmm. huge armholes on my jackets. I want small armholes so I can move and I'm comfortable. I don't like gapping collars on my jacket. Yeah, sometimes and, uh, I have. I don't like the ties thing. that are too long. It's just the right length and never extend past the waistband of the trousers. Check out the video about proper tie length. Um, other than that, I would say I don't like men who dress like teenagers in sneakers, cargo pants, t-shirts, and baseball hats. That's quite right. So I think the, the distinction we would make now is saying, you know, we want to, if you'd see somebody like that, reach out to them and hope we can communicate to them what the what the benefits of classic style are rather than just sort of writing them off as a lost cause and not worrying about it. Well, and, and even then, right, I have, I have people who don't care about dressing up, but I still like respect them and talk to them. I think I'm less preachy and I'm not trying to convert people because I, I realize it's, you know, it has to come from within. Mm -hmm. There has to be an interest. And if you try to tell other people what to do, they're much less likely to do it than if they think they had the idea and they came up with it. Right. It's like basic psychology, right? What I really don't like, especially when I'm with people, is cell phones. People checking cell phones all the time and sharing their stuff on Facebook. I prefer if people focus on the people around them. Um, I really like to entertain. No, yeah, we like still have that cell phone etiquette one. We still have yeah, that. It's so true. Oh, look at the lighting now. Yep, it's changing. Really yeah. changed, right? If they're not good. I'm not happy. And I mean, Teresa was behind the camera. I know one she didn't know what to do, adjust the ISO or anything. Right, right. I really hate it's waiting in line. No matter whether it's a grocery store or the movie theater, it's just not for me. Yeah, I still hate it. Still true. <laughs> well, <laughs> I would say it's rather sarcastic. <laughs> and ironic. Stupid. <laughs> I'm very critical, I have very high standards, they said to others, so sometimes it may be overbearing. Sometimes, yeah. Um, other than that, it's kind of funny you know, when you describe your weakness as, you know, having high, high standards. standards. <laughs> right. I care too much. Yeah, yeah. Red. I like full-bodied, bold red wines. I also like white wines, it just has to be good. <laughs> Definitely both. I either wear a necktie or a bow tie whenever I have a dress shirt. And um, depends on my mood. Sometimes I don't. If I just, I don't know, pick up my daughter and I don't have a tie on, that's on the wear. Well, <laughs> um, other than that, I would say dress shirts. I wear dress shirts a lot. And if it would be just one Still do. specific thing, I would say white linen pocket square. It's classic. Ooh, good it's sales pitch. <laughs> but I mean, it's true, right? You, you wear it. Even, oh, of course. You just have one, like, get that one. Yep. We happen to sell it as well, which is quite true, but I wore it long so before we sold it. Suit, I change a shirt, I change a tie, the boutonniere, the pocket square, the socks, the shoes. So I hardly ever wear an outfit twice. Yeah, it's still true. Well, there's always one little thing that'll change. I love to play racquetball, and I do so with weekly. a pinky ring or something. Um, as do you kid, still play racquetball play weekly? Soccer. No, I, 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 I don't. I don't play racquetball weekly. I go to yoga now, and we just got this uh, Peloton bike. I always like biking in the summer and stuff, so it's just Probably a good way to get some time. exercise in. I have quite a few unique items, but the most unique would be a black and then silk-faced evening overcoat. You getting that? Unique in itself is either unique or it's not. Can't be most unique, <laughs> right? I mean, you, you'd catch that. It's just like, makes you look dumb right from the get-go. Speaking of superlatives, more on that later when we take a look at my <laughs> first video. That goes with black tie and white tie ensembles. 
Oh, that's a tough one. I generally love to eat. I like meat. And if I, I still like to eat, I would say can you tell? <laughs> I like movies, all kinds of movies, especially the ones where I have to think. And where there's maybe a twist at the end, such as The Usual Suspects or Matrix. Yeah, it's a little bit movie, but I think it has changed a bit in the sense I like longer shows now where there's a bit more like depth to it in the character development, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't know, I watch like Narcos, for example. Really, why spend all that time watching TV when you can just watch old gentlemen's Gazette videos, right? <laughs> I don't really watch TV, but in terms of series, I would say House of Cards. <laughs> Best purchase. Wow, well, I purchased quite a few great things, but number one would be a set of four Goyard suitcases. And if you'd like to learn the entire story about it, follow the link. It's a good story. Check it out. Oh, nice outro. <laughs> Shall we do iPhone or Android? Oh, some outtakes here, okay. You can put in a little blooper at the end. How about that? Well, you know, when we started, we checked out a few other things and stuff, but we didn't quite have the font down and stuff, so. All right, next up, let's look at Preston's application video. It's not anything you guys have ever seen, but I saw it. And when we were looking for people to be a host, we wanted it to be difficult. So we asked people to make a video telling us about themselves and just making a segment about something that, you know, they would like to present on our YouTube channel. So they had to put in a lot of work that you make the video. And we wanted it to be hard because we only wanted people who were that excited about the job, who are willing to put in all that effort. Right. Greetings. My name is Preston Schleter, and this is a video app. I mean, look at that. He even like used the, the logo and stuff. He tried to make it as close as possible uh, to us. So that's mm -hmm. good, right? He kind of paid attention to it. Video application submission for the recently opened positions at the Gentleman's Gazette and Fort Belvedere. I'm currently you can see me looking at my script there. Oh, yeah, screen. yeah. And then I, I get that, right? It's like you're nervous. It's, it's something new, like you haven't done that. But you know, I looked at you, it was like, okay, he has a, a collar with a collar pin. He has a tie bar, he has a tie, he has a pocket square. And I noticed the Lawrence Fellows illustrations in the back yeah. right away, right? Yeah. So I was like, that was intentionally put there. I don't know about this like candle thing or whatever there and, you know, the canned light. So it, you had the straight line there, but at least, you know, you, you cared about the subject matter and, and that was what right. important to me. It's actually really funny to, to think back on this now. My, my phone, which I used to shoot this, was precariously perched. I had like a random assortment of like, it was on top of a lamp, so on top of a lampshade, and I had like a cutting board and a series of small books yeah. and some coasters and just it was Jimmy all... rigged it, right? Exactly. That's how it goes. That's so how it goes. It could have fallen over at any time, but hey, it worked long enough just to get the shot. So well, I mean, look at your hairline here. Did it recede a little more? You know, I'm not sure. Maybe it has. We'll have uh, to compare that later. You viewers be the so judge. Approximately 30 to 35 minutes west of the Twin Cities. I am a 2017 graduate of Gustavus Adolphus College in St. Peter, Minnesota. During my time at... See, there's my hard jump cut because that's... I talked way too much in this, so I had to cut in, in between well, parts figure, of sentences. I figure, and I mean, take a look. One thing I noticed about Preston was he had very active eyebrows that would go up and down. I was like, what's going on here? What's right. going on? But you know, it didn't deter me. I just noticed it. Yeah, I think that's probably still true. Early 20th century menswear. Written content such as the Black Tie Guide, originally written by... Yeah, I think people sometimes think that um, Preston kind of reads out the camera, but but you don't, right? No. Nope. He is a very impressive speaker. <laughs> he, he speaks like he's reading it, but he's not. He's just able to do that better than I am. Um, I think I have more interruptions than, than you have when I feel. The other cool thing is here, you're mentioning like... The black tie guy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Peter Marshall. A series called Dress Like a Grown Up. Yeah, it was really cool for me to have mentioned the Black Tie Guide as one of the sources that I had first come to when I was on this menswear journey. Uh, I used it a lot. I read pretty much every page on the website. 
And then, lo and behold, after beginning work here at the Gentleman's Gazette, an offer came along for us to purchase the Black Tie Guide, so we did. And for me personally, it was a lot of fun to actually be working on and kind of fixing up and polishing up this website that had meant so much to me as I was starting out on that style journey. Exactly. I mean, you were into it, right? And it just it was a lot of work. We had to go in and make everything like mobile responsive, change all the content, add, and just make it overall better, especially the picture sourcing. That was a big piece of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I currently hold a part-time position for a media advertising firm in Minneapolis where I have chiefly been charged with everything from... Chiefly being charged. That's press for you. Yep. Posting yep. for a wide variety of Twin Cities and other Midwest businesses. So it's funny that I, I mentioned this part-time position. After I filmed this application video, I was actually in the middle of kind of figuring out, you know, obviously, what my next phase of employment would be. And because there was a bit of a window between when I submitted my application and when you got back to me, I had actually taken on at this firm where I worked part-time I had just started in a full-time position, and then I heard back from Raphael, and I thought, I knew this was going to happen. So it no, was... No, no, according to your parents, you didn't just think that. You yelled it out. I did. It's true. I, I saw Raphael's email, and I yelled across the house, I knew it! <laughs> so. And his mom was like, what's happening? Right. I knew Preston would probably take the job because he was really into it. But we had, I think, 56 applications with, you know, anywhere from five to 20 minute videos. So we took the time to watch them and it just takes some time because after, you know, watching 10 videos, you're like, I need a break. So I believe not only is my writing strong, but I am also able to turn out content of quality quickly. I'd like to turn it over for a moment to a friend and colleague of mine, Andrew Casey, whom I asked previously to provide his comments on what he believes my style... I thought it was smart, and, you know, he put the extra effort in to bring in a friend. I mean, of course, you don't bring in someone who says, this guy sucks, don't hire him. I know that. But at least you kind of try to provide some information. Right. Or just show that you go the extra mile. Mm -hmm. Well, and the way I thought about it, too, was, you know, I could sit here and talk myself up all day and say, I'm so great, I meet all of your criteria and qualifications. But I thought if I could bring somebody else in who would vouch for me and say, you know, he's not just talking a big game, he actually could help you out, that it would probably be helpful to my chances. Yeah, he paid me $25 and three <laughs> beers and he's the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> but I mean, people don't really know Drew. He's a great guy. He's actually a conductor. He also wears white tie. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also conducted your music video, right? That is correct, yes. Uh, he conducted the concert that you will be seeing footage from. He and I love to collaborate whenever we can. Uh, you can find his website in the video description. Let's say that. There you go. All right, let's move on here. Sure. Back to Preston. And we'll get to the topic at hand. What was the topic? I to it a little bit earlier on. I would like today to discuss the style of Fred Astaire. Fred Astaire, see? It took us until now, or just until a few months ago, to publish a Fred Astaire video. Correct. But uh, he was Preston style icon, so yeah. made sense for him to make that video. And in fact, I, I repurposed some of the script elements uh, from this video in what I eventually did for the channel, so you may be able to see some similarities there. How many hours do you think you put in to this application overall? That's a good question. Um, gosh, well, it took me about an hour to an hour and a half to film this A footage. Probably took about another half hour to 45 minutes to do the voiceover portion, maybe an hour to do all the scripting stuff, and then several, several hours, I don't know, maybe up to like six to eight hours I spent editing this thing, putting it all together. So quite well, a bit of time. Plus all the mindset. So I knew that someone would have to spend at least, you know, a full or two full days on this, mm -hmm. but we wanted that because if, if you're willing to do that, 
you're really into this. And that's why I knew that even if he had another job offer, he would take this job because it was much more aligned with his interests than an advertising agency job. Yep, you had me figured out. That Astaire is a style icon of mine is because he had good style sense in the way that he could combine things. He understood the importance of fit and he understood style theory. To supplement these ideas, yeah, good. I found There's a whole primary sources from lots of pictures too. Yeah. Well, and here was my historical mindset. Having been a history major in college, I wanted to supplement with primary sources. You know, uh, an interview that Fred Astaire had done in 1957. Uh, use a secondary source of a, a blog post that had been written about him. So it wasn't just my ideas, it was yeah. backed up by other information. Yeah, it's exactly the way we work at the Gentleman's Gazette, so I could see by the way he did it on how he would approach something like that. And that's what I wanted to see, right? It's like, are you really kind of doing the hard work, doing the lack work, going into the detail, providing information, providing the history, mm -hmm. and, and he did. So I was like, okay, that's, that's good. This is some good alignment here. I mean, you were pretty confident about this, otherwise you wouldn't have said I knew it, right? You, you at least hoped that you would get a shot. Yes, yep. Yeah, it made sense, and why was that? Uh, well, I, I was proud of the product that I put together. I put a lot of time and effort into it, so I thought it would at least merit some consideration. I did, I did hope to hear back, and maybe expect a little bit to hear back, but I, I'm glad that I did. Even though the first video that you viewers saw me in was the eyeglasses two-parter that we did, and we filmed an introductory sequence for that, that was actually not the video that I shot first for the channel. Uh, the first one I did was our video on superlatives, and I think you'll definitely be able to see even a difference from my application video to this video being in my house, I was reasonably comfortable putting that application together, but here, under these studio lights and with our videographer and with Raphael in the studio coaching me on everything I was doing, I instantly got a lot more nervous than I had been, and I think oh, that yeah. comes through here. Oh yeah. All right, let's jump in here and see what we find. Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll be discussing superlatives in speech, what they are, how they may negatively be affecting people's perceptions. There it is again. Yeah, there, there are the eyebrows. ...to improve your speech patterns in the future. I don't know if you get that, but it's at the best so of both worlds ice cream. What a superlative is. A superlative is a part of speech, usually... We don't really use this orange sidebar much anymore. We don't. We used for a while, but, you know, constantly improving and experimenting. And ...or most nervous, like I am right now, given that this is one of my first videos for the channel. That was yeah. your suggestion to yeah, yeah. I told him, like, you know, make yourself, or make fun of yourself. It's usually a good way to, to make the viewer more forgiving and, and you become more likable that way. superlatives are definitely becoming more common as a sort of conversational crutch. Many people these days, especially Americans... I mean, look at him, he didn't read any of that. He all spoke like that and was like, yeah, I can tell. You're really kind of, you want to make this really go well. And he just speaks naturally so scripted that most people will feel like it's it's too artificial even though it's not so i, I realized it was hard but at the same time I, I wanted you to just go right you can only change so many things at a time right right and you have to take it step by step mm -hmm. I, I thought it was a, a brilliant first video compared to to mine i mean just compare it energy level um cadence uh, your, your mimic and everything, I think, a lot better. Well, now that you're seeing these videos back to back, I guess uh, you can be the judge. Americans, and particularly people under the age of 30, are using these kinds of superlatives to describe really any opinion they might have on any subject at this point. <laughs> so now we've got like the entire Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of variety here. Uh, I think now we've learned if anything requires that much text on screen, it's probably worth making simpler. Yeah, and it's also there's a lot of orange space, right, in that case. 
It's like spacing it out, making it visually more appealing, mm -hmm. making it easy to read. Default to the old standby. Most amazing f***ing thing ever. <laughs> Another one of your gems. <laughs> I remember a person was like, he made me swear. <laughs> Just best and worst. Not only does it add more variety, but you can make your point much more clearly. It's always helpful for the listener if you can provide a more nuanced position in your speech. That way things aren't just as So you can see there that I'm kind of, and a lot of commenters pointed this out, that I have this very pronounced on-camera lean. I think we have figured out how to mitigate this a little bit now, yeah, but... It's it's our studio is in a very old building, so the floors are crooked. <laughs> well, uh, as I laid out in my FAQ video, which again you can find here, uh, that has to deal with two things. Partly that I have cerebral palsy, which is a condition that affects the muscles in my legs, and also that I have one leg that is shorter than the other. So those two factors together mean that I naturally stand with a little bit of a lean, but since filming this video and my first handful of videos, I've tried to be more conscious of that and not quite so tilted so that it's not distracting to the viewer. Exactly. Saying that something is the best in the world. Well, if you haven't been all around the world to have multiple examples, That's you really right. don't know if it's the best in the world or not, and other people might pick up on the fact that you might not know what you're talking about. So, make an effort to observe the complexities in things like art or sports, and use a nuanced vocabulary to describe just how you feel about them. Something like, the defense in that baseball game had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. This Still kind of a superlative there, if I'm to be honest. Right. Yep. I think part of the reason that these examples were maybe not as polished is because if I'm remembering correctly, I didn't actually put any of those examples in the script. That was something that I had to learn uh, within the process of filming my first two videos is that examples are always important. I had not written any down ahead of time, so I believe you were just kind of offering me suggestions of maybe say something like this, maybe say something like that. So I was coming up with these examples on the spot, and as you can see, they were not great because a lot of them still had some superlatives in them. So. Yeah. All part of the learning experience, I guess. Think of it this way. Do you really love cheating? This was an interesting scene to film on my first day of filming. <laughs> Especially because a bag of Cheetos isn't going to send you $20 on your birthday. That's right. So, you now bet. that you know what superlatives But again, are, we wanted to add a little element of fun to it. Because yep. Preston could <laughs> kind of appear as very kind of academic, like a teacher or professor, and we wanted to make it mm -hmm. a little softer. Well, granted, we started me with kind of a dry concept for a first video of this linguistic technique kind of breakdown, very, very academic and in setting. You liked it. Trap music is the best genre ever. I know jazz is best. <laughs> Next, take a day to observe. That was another one of yours. Yeah. Just making fun of yourself, of right? Superlative video, and now we say jazz is example, best. I mean, you, might say, you get it. I love pizza. I love my new smartphone app. Or, I love this yoga class I've been taking. After a while, take do you some time yoga? to examine this. No, I do not. I am not near flexible enough to try yoga. So no lying is not gentlemanly either. After observing these habits, make an effort to try to construct your sentences differently and with more nuance in the future. That's right. There are right. several ways, of course, to increase your vocabulary. For example, you could pick up a word of the day calendar, try to read more books. We go to the office, radio, press and wins like 90% of the time. 98% of the time. <laughs> Here's another helpful tip. Come to the Gentleman's Gazette YouTube channel and watch more of my videos. To wrap up, <laughs> our philosophy on this topic is simple. If you want to- oh, We wanted it to be kind of cringy funny. Yikes. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, increasing your vocabulary doesn't have to come across as pretentious or elitist as long as you're doing it for the right reasons. In other words, don't use complex vocabulary just to seem superficially smarter than those around you. That's right, Preston. This is an activity yeah. for self-improvement. Think about it this way. Your new vocabulary should ultimately make you seem more genuine, not less. In conclusion, say what you mean, 
and mean what you say. Well, there it is, my first solo video for the channel. Personally, I think I was pretty was, nervous and stilted toward one. the beginning. How about you? Whatever you think, put it in the comments below. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That way, when Raphael publishes a video soon, you can take the taste of this one out of your mouth. In today's video, I'm wearing a blue-gray needlepoint. That was unnecessary. Like, it wasn't a bad the first video. The trousers are almost the same color, but they're a little darker, so it helps to separate. Boy, them. I've changed a lot of things here. I still own that jacket, but I don't wear it at the moment because I've not gotten those sleeves lengthened and yep. obviously you can tell that they're way too short especially yeah. compared to the sleeves of my shirt and i mean we noticed that right but again i didn't want to i didn't want to give the feeling that you know everything he does is wrong or incorrect it's it's a progression i don't own those shoes anymore had to throw those out because they were cheap and fell apart <laughs> pocket square and cufflinks are all from fort belvedere it's a funny thing. Oh, they're After still around for some reason. Mm. Fort Belvedere <laughs> products increased dramatically. Who'd have thought? The bow tie is Shantung silk. Awesome. Well, I think that was it. Yeah, you've seen our first videos, and uh, I think we've come a long way. Uh, I don't know what you think, but uh, hopefully in 10 years we can sit here and laugh about the crap we produced nine years ago. Exactly, yeah. Who knows, we might even be looking back on this video and saying, what were we thinking? Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, guys, I get it. These videos were really, really long, and I know hardly anyone is gonna watch them from start to finish, but we thought, you know, people ask a lot of questions, and it's about us, so we wanted to make it somewhat funny and entertaining and provide some insights. I hope you enjoyed it. If not, that's okay. Our other videos are very different. So I hope you can watch those. Right. Well, thanks for coming along on this celebration with us and uh, congrats on 10 years and here's to many more. That's right. Yeah.